Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Sam and today I'm back with the iPad running iOS 13 to show you all of the new features exclusive to the iPad on, I should say, iPad OS 13 because the update was so big, Apple actually gave the operating system a new name. So if you're excited for that, as always, drop a like down below. It does seriously help me out. I really appreciate that. And hit subscribe, of course, so you stay up to date on the latest Apple news. Let's go ahead and dig into the iPad. All right, so kicking off this list is a refresh version of the home screen. I almost called it a redesign, but really the icons are just a little bit smaller and you can now pin widgets on the home screen as well. I was personally expecting something a little bit more magnificent, a little bit more eye-catching. It's basically the same thing we've had forever, but you know, it looks slightly different and there's widgets now, which Android has had for, I don't know, a few millennia now. But following the new home screen, there are a ton of features for power users, uh, things that aren't super apparent right off the bat. So first off, for slide over apps, you can now frequently change between them and also view them in like their own app expose area. So if you wanna add something to slide over, press and hold on an icon and then drag it over to the side of your iPad. Now you can do that with multiple apps, basically stack them on top of each other to easily switch between them on the fly which is really handy actually so you can drag all these apps together and then drag and hold on them sort of drag them up a little bit to put them in almost a multitasking view of their own but also you can just switch between them really quickly by sliding right here also just like you can on pretty much any desktop computer Mac PC or Linux you can now open multiple versions of the same app and this is so good to hear that it's finally come to the iPad this year so what you do is well what you'd think you just drag the icon again up on the screen and you have a new version or a new instance of the app now you might be saying okay if i have 14 notes app windows open how am I gonna know where they are, how to organize them, or even how to close them out so they're not like cluttering up my workflow all the time? But what you do is just sort of like long press and hold, I think it's called the haptic touch on that icon that you have at multiple windows for, show all windows right here will pop up, and then voila, there's all of your windows in an app expose view showing you everywhere they are and exactly what you're doing in each of those instances. Moving on to this next feature, I did not believe we were actually gonna see this, but uh, I, I got to show you this because it's too out of this world not to believe. So there is now mouse slash cursor support on the iPad. So what you can do is connect a USB mouse to your iPad now and use it well, as you guessed, as a mouse. Now, it's not perfect. It feels very, very early stage. I'm sure it's gonna improve. I mean, even the look of the cursor, to me, looks like something for internal Apple testing. It just does not look nice at all, but I mean, it works, and I don't know what to say other than, yeah, you have mouse support. Following that, hands down, though, out of this entire list, there is one feature that has blown my mind every single time I've used it. Not the new home screen, not even like the new external hard drive feature that I'm going to show you in a second, but the Apple Pencil latency. It used to be 20 milliseconds latency, and now it's down to nine, and I did not think that would be that noticeable. Uh, it is totally noticeable with the Apple Pencil 2 here paired with the newest iPad Pro from fall of 2018. You guys have to see this with your own eyes. This is 60 FPS, of course, playing back super smooth for all of you, but in person, it looks even better on the 120 hertz display. But the video actually does do it justice. You guys can see I am writing and it is going down, quote unquote, on the paper the second I am doing it. Like there is no delay. You could totally trick me and tell me this is a paper and a pen, no hardware, like no, no technology, and I would believe I'm just writing on paper. It is so impressive. Huge props to Apple for them being able to accomplish this. I don't know how they've done it, but they have. In markup in iOS 13 on the iPad, there are some new features here. So first off, you probably saw this one leak a few days ahead of the iPad and iOS 13 being announced. That is a redesigned toolkit. The tools here, guys, the attention to detail is so amazing. I wish we saw this level of, I don't know, just curation around the entirety of iOS rather than just here, but I'll take what we can get for now. It looks incredible, and of course, there are some new features here as well. I love how there's like a color picker straight like forward. You don't have to sort of search for it. It's no longer a hidden feature like it used to be. And you can just pick any color of the rainbow now, which is dope. Also, while you're in this markup view, there's a new feature called full page markup. So rather than just being able to mark up the screenshot that you have, uh, in a lot of places, you can now mark up an entire document at once. So if you take a screenshot here, you can actually scroll 
and it's captured the entire document. This is really neat. It's actually really handy because you don't have to like stitch screenshots together. You can do all the work you need to do in one place and the redesign toolbar helps you get it done really quickly. Manipulating text on the iPad with iPad OS 13 or iPad OS, I don't know the exact naming clasher just yet, but it is a little bit different and moving things around or copying and pasting things, undoing, is a lot better. First up, there's a new pinch gesture for copy and paste, and I like this one a lot. So if you wanna copy something, you can actually sort of hold your finger on one part of the text and then drag to select easy. You can also now directly just drag the cursor around there. I don't really see a magnifying glass anymore, which is nice. But once you have selected something, whether you do it the traditional way of like tapping or now tapping and then dragging across text, you can pinch like this with three fingers to copy something and then sort of do like a, a throw gesture with three fingers, an anti-pinch, I guess you would say. What is the, a punch maybe? That's the opposite of pinch. And you do that to paste something. It's actually like you're grabbing the content and then throwing it back, which is super intuitive. I, I actually like that a lot. It is so much better than having to like tap, then hit copy, then tap again, then hit paste. Really, really like that a lot. There is also redo and undo. Three finger swipe left will undo do what you just did, and a three finger swipe right will redo what you just did. Uh, and it works like that. Again, very intuitive, makes sense, and you don't have to shake your iPad anymore, which is just really great for not looking insane. Inputting text by typing on iPad OS is also better. So watch what you can do here. If you ever want to shrink the keyboard, drag it around, make it more versatile as part of your workspace, now you can do a two finger pinch to make it smaller, it's iPhone size now. And if you want to, you can take the same two fingers to sort of drag it around your display, move it somewhere else. But with this functionality, you get the new quick swipe keyboard. So now you can type in just like you can on the iPhone by swiping between letters, which if you have a cluttered workflow and you don't want a gigantic keyboard, you can still input text really, really quick this way without really sacrificing arguably speed or efficiency. And again, if you don't like this, you want it to go away for some reason, you can just take two fingers and sort of do that grab or pinch in, and there your keyboard is back to normal. iPad OS also introduces support for your iPad as a secondary display for your Mac. And this includes like Apple Pencil support too. You can see in this image on Apple's preview site, you can seamlessly just pick up your iPad, use it as an external display, and get to work on that in conjunction with your Mac. I haven't been brave enough to try out the Mac OS beta just yet, but from what I've seen, it's pretty incredible, and like Apple does anything, it just kind of works. Moving on, the Files app in iPad OS got a, a solid upgrade. I don't know, you could argue it is actually usable now. I had such a hard time with previous versions of the Files app, I could never do anything seriously. So not only is it redesigned for ease of use, it makes sense like the way you browse through files, it now works with not only flash drives, but external hard drives. So I just happen to have a USB-C hard drive by Samsung, I'm gonna plug it in right here, and I can actually natively browse my file system on the hard drive with no additional hardware. I am plugging this, again, directly into the USB-C port on my iPad Pro, and it is just working. So that's pretty cool, that's something I've wanted forever, and you can just do that now. Also on the iPad for importing files like this, you can do it directly into specific apps. So before, if you wanted to import or edit photos or videos on your iPad, you stupidly had to put it in photos, and then you could take it from photos to like Lightroom or iMovie or something like that. Now, you don't have to do it that weird way. You can input it directly into third-party apps if you want to when developers update their stuff. So no more of that Photos app middle person, it's gone, it just makes sense again. If you connect an external keyboard to iPad OS, there are some brand new shortcuts in Safari. Uh, I didn't test this because I've never really used a keyboard with my iPad, but on Apple's official preview site, they show this screenshot, and you can see the breadth of everything they've brought here. You can do pretty much everything now through the keyboard. Finally, in Safari, you guessed it, Apple has again taken what we used to know as standard on the iPad and made it desktop class. So apps like YouTube, the desktop version works properly Properly. Google Drive apps, Docs, Sheets, Slides, they work competently as they should be able to in a desktop class browser. And the best part of it all is that on the iPad in Safari, you now get a dedicated download manager so you can actually view your files and like drag and drop them however you'd like. It is amazing, it is so good to see this, and I think after this update, you might actually be able to argue that the iPad is a fully 
competent computer replacement. But of course, I've only been using it for a day and a half, so a lot can change between now and when iOS 13 or iPadOS is gonna be dropping, which is later this fall. Now, Apple never gives a specific release date for when these features are gonna be dropping for everyone, but it's usually a few days before the 2019 iPhones come out, which this year, per usual, are expected in September of 2019. So expect iOS 13, expect iPadOS then. I wanna hear your thoughts about this down below. Do you think this is the update we've been waiting for, or were you expecting something, I don't know, different? I mean, what do you think of the new home screen, for example? Let me know down below, and of course, if you enjoyed this video, drop a like, hit subscribe for more. I'm Sam, and I'll catch you all in my next video.